Slow it up now. Well, hello, Mr. Marston. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Did you meet my father? John Marston, this is my father, Drew McFarland. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Marston. Please. So, my daughter informs me that you're here on some secret mission to uh, remove some undesirables from the county. Something like that. I'm grateful for the hospitality, sir. Well, you know, we've lived here for 30 years now. Came here from the east. The land had never been settled. For 10 years, we fought the Indians, tough men. And we had outlaws, and we had drought, and we had smallpox, terrible winters, cholera. I buried more of my children than I raised. Sorry to hear that, sir. I've seen strong men wither and die under that unforgiven sun. That whole herd of cattle take sick and die. But I've never once doubted my life here. No, sir. When I hear about this so-called federal government sending out agents to covertly murder and control people, then I start to worry. I mean, yeah, all right, Williamson is a menace. And men like him are the plague. But isn't a government agent a worse menace? And all that symbolizes, I mean. You may be right, sir. Well, you're a brave man. And you're always going to be welcome here. But you tell your friends out east that we don't want to live like that out here. And sneaking around and spying and secret missions. Right? It's preposterous. Trust me, sir. I agree with you. Good. Well, we won't insult you any further. Come on, Bonnie, we got things to do. Mr. Marston, do you want to join us? It's Daddy's favorite pastime. Apart from political discourse, that is. What is? Breaking in horses. Come on. I hear you're a pretty decent rider. For a city dweller, that is. <laughs> You're gonna need this, Mr. Marston. Right, now you got some rope on your belt. Let's see if we can't wrangle some horses. sure have some interesting theories on what the government's doing, sir. They ain't theories, Mr. Marston. I saw the telegram Marshall got from Blackwater. It ain't exactly a state secret and sent you. Well, is he wrong? I saw those men from the train. The government can go to hell if you ask me. Those sons of bitches would steal a coin off a dead man's eyes. Mr. Marston! He's right. Now, I don't know much about politics. Please, Paul, can we just enjoy the ride? I know we're only as free as they say we are. Power's like a drink. The more you have, the more you want. And there are few men who can handle it. There's certain things in this country a woman could do much better if you ask me. I ain't gonna argue with that, Miss McFarland. Boy. Easy there. Almost. 
Those guys! Come on, this damn boy! Mr. Marston! Come on! Let's go! You'll have him in no time! Calm down now! Take it slow now! Come on! Right on. Come on! Here we go! Show me what you got, boy! That's it! Don't give up! Relax! You're doing fine! Look at that! We'll make a cowboy out of you yet! Let me take you from here. You get back on your own horse. Whew. I think that's enough activity for an old timer like me. I think this will back to the ranch. so many folks in trouble. It'll sap your spirit and make you poor, but it's straight, and it's decent. There's no better night's sleep than after an honest day's work. It's no wonder you look so tired, then. Some deck must be shy of Joker, Miss McFarland. Who'd have thought you'd be such a natural in Weston Broncos? That was fun! I think you could be a fine rancher one day. If you can bear to stop killing people for a living. Sure. Amos was saying some horses been spotted somewhere outside of Armadillo. Let's go, Mr. Marston. We can really do with those horses. Come on, Mr. Marston. Let's head for Armadillo. You never did tell me why you were never married. Aside from the snobbery, that is. You sure ask a lot. I'm just surprised, that's all. You must have been quite a catch. The fact that you're talking in the past says it all. No, that's not what I mean. You must have had some suitors, that's all I'm saying. Some, I suppose. Here and there. A ranch in the middle of Hennigan's stead ain't really the place to find a husband. Amos, he's a little, well, you know, countryfied. Where'd you get your airs and graces, Miss McFarland? From a couple of cheap governesses, Paul hired to save us from being savages. I'd like to talk about more than just cattle and chickens sometimes, that's all. And after my brother left, it was up to me to become the man of the ranch. He never admitted, but my paw's a lot frailer than he looks. You're worth two of any man I know, miss. I'll try to take that as a compliment. In many ways, my wife is kind of like you, Miss McFarland. Is that so? She's always been a woman in a man's world. You don't talk about her very much. It's kind of painful, but she's never far from my thoughts. There's my boys. Come on, Mr. Marston.
Thanks for your help today, Mr. Marston. We got some fine horses. You know, why don't you keep that stallion as your own, as a thank you from all of us? Thank you, ma'am. He's a fine animal.
Just so you know, I don't take requests, mister. I'm looking for a man. Name's Peter. The fellow's meant to get married today. Seen him around? Who? Peter, is what she said. You ain't after no Pete Turner, are you? For all I know. Where can I find him? Well, my memory escapes me when not properly stimulated. Well, let's see if we can refresh it. Five dollars will do. Or you could run a little errand for me. What do you need done? It's my wife. She packed her things this morning and left me. The dumb wench is still at the freight station waiting for the stagecoach. If you could convince her to take me back. Her name's Rose. I guess I'll go have a talk with her. You'll need more than talk with that bitch. Miss, please, if only... You know what? Tell that bastard I ain't going back. Not this time. Not even at gunpoint. Sign an oath, miss. For better or worse. The way I see it, you should give him one last chance. Stop bothering me, you dumb cowpoke, or I'll call the marshal. Truth is, Pete Turner ain't been an armadillo for near on 20 years now. Kind of a queer fella and all. Wasn't here every night. Sure as the moon in the sky. What happened to him? <laughs> what happens to all of us? I reckon you'll find him at Odd Fellow's Rest. Yeah, that's where he'd be, I guess. Sir.
Someone might as well have this. No good piece of dirt. Thank you.
I heard she's I a witch. The Mexicans a call us Verasco. We live in hey, you, chicken headed guy, come over here. Holy moly! It's that time already? You a tough guy, Mister? I hope so. We gonna have a showdown. Hello. I don't miss, Mister. Bear that in mind. Oh, Looks like I got you now. God, I promise to repent if you let me live. This is mighty uncomfortable, friend. I hope you see Anything for a quiet life. It pays to be rich, don't it? That rail track southwest was put through my old farm. I'm getting headaches just here. Howdy, mister. Since you're here, you want to make yourself useful? Not particularly. Listen, son, I know you got a mission. But right now, I need another gun. Why? What's happening? We've had this problem for months with this group of bandits. We're getting drunk and murdering settlers. Last night, they went to a big place up near Ridgewood. They burnt the place down, killed the men, burning most of them alive, and raped the women. Women folk then got their throats slit. One of them survived and walked in here this morning. Anyway. We got a posse gathering up near Ridgewood. Will you ride with us? All right. Thank you, John Marston. It's gonna be a bloody job. Huh. I don't think I know any other kind, sir.
Hey, wait up! I did. For a man who claims to have found a remedy to all ailments, he was in pretty bad shape. His tonic has helped a great many people. It's a medical breakthrough from the East, the result of years of research. If only it could cure him of his diarrhea of the mouth. I wouldn't be so dismissive of science if I was you. Times is changing fast. He's no more a scientist than I am a priest, but people can spend their hard-earned money however they please. He's certainly a character, that West Dickens. I can't understand a goddamn word he said. A more flannel mouth bunko artist I've never met. Look, vultures. I see him. First, did you and Eli go check it out? Ain't no survivors here, Marshal. Man, this don't look too good. Somebody was so busy killing people, they went and dropped their gun. Let's go! Slow it up now. We'll head for Ridgewood Farm. See if they know anything. What kind of man does that? A bunch of weak men. A pack of cowards is the most dangerous kind. Some men are just born plain meat. I think it's this land that makes the men. As much as the other way around. Men are born, and then they're born. At least that's how I see it. Especially now the word's out, we're cleaning up the county. Between Walton's boys and the rustlers, we've been spilling a lot of blood. Hunt Marshall, four vultures. All right, let's go check it out. Man, more dead bodies. Fire still smoking. Those scumbags must still be around. Come on. Let's pound leather, boys. Looks like they're headed for Ridgewood Farm. Sons of bitches! Didn't you want to run a guy to outlaws, arson? Yeah, but not like that. It wasn't our way. At least it wasn't my way. Killing and thieving's never right, boy. No matter how you dress it up. Unless it's ordered by a court of law, you mean? This is too quiet. I got a bad feeling about this. All right, boys, let's have a look around. Nobody's in the shed. John, shoot that door open. Holy sweet mother of mercy. Please, please don't shoot me. Some bandits came by and took a sausage. They're holed up in the farmhouse. Some of my family is being kept hostage inside. <laughs> All right, boys, we need to get into that house right now.
This ain't nice. I know. Enjoy this! As soon as you can, make a run for the shed. Keep your head down. of that bunch gets fifty dollars it ain't about the money marshal these are people's lives people's homes <laughs> let's go get on your horse boy all right let's find those bastards John. I didn't kill you before, but I sure as shit will now. Get yourself down here, Bill. You know you ain't man enough to stop me. <laughs> you know I don't want to kill you, but I will. You always did have a high opinion of yourself, John. <laughs> Dutch always said you were an arrogant son of a bitch. I guess he was about right. Get him, boys! Everybody, take cover! In that shed! Follow me! Keep together and stay in here. This is the best cover we got. God damn it! Oh, 
Thanks for your help, John. Norman here is gonna help us get to Bill. <coughs> Ain't you, Norman? Thank you, Mr. Dick. Mighty kind. Fuck you! Hog time. Let's get him to jail.